What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Obviously I'm a little delayed in getting these videos out, but needless to say, I have walked into a bit more elaborate of a project than I originally anticipated. Where I left you guys, I had shown you our little bit of a blank or casting or an impression of what we're hopefully going to be able to replicate with carbon fiber and turn into ductwork. So this is where we left you. From here, we stepped it up to Rev 2, which is, as you can see, it's very, very light cardboard. And we basically tried to make flat geometric shapes and basically take the profile of this and simplify it. Not because we had to, but if we wanted to make a better mold, obviously if you're dealing with flat pieces of plywood, it just makes it easier. So we took this direction, modified it, made a CAD template of it, and once we were confident that our CAD template fit, over there, we moved on to this, and this is what we'll call three quarter inch cabinet plywood, and it's got We'll call it, if I'm not mistaken, we did a, a DTM or just your standard automotive based uh, primer um, to make sure we seal the corners. Um, and obviously you can see we ripped part of it off when we were using it as a mold, but we use this to make our carbon fiber parts. Now, obviously when you put this on top of that, there's a considerable size difference. There's a good reason for that. We couldn't just make it one piece all in one foul swoop. No, because there's no way to take the mold out of the part once we made it. So we decided the easiest way to do this is, as you can see, we just elongated the height so that we could make a part that goes over the top and a part that comes up from the bottom. And then from there, we're just gonna end up bonding the two pieces together. So. our mold, we were able to produce ba -ba -da -ba, these two lovely pieces of carbon fiber, with the exception of, as you can see, some leftover cabinetry. Now, these are going to require trimming, but ultimately, as you can see, the basic idea, we can get them to fall together just right. Is that this will be in some way shape or form what becomes the final radiator intake duct for my oil cooler so ironically this is in hindsight why this is taking so long we've gone from foam to cardboard cutout to plywood mold to two separate pieces of carbon fiber. And we're only halfway there. Yeah. So I know at this point, some of you are wondering, well, why didn't you just leave it the way it was? Because you're technically putting your car back together. You're right, but circling back to the episode where I went over how I converted to the tunnel floors, Originally, how my radiator and oil cooler were, they were mounted to the flat portion of the floor. Now, because the tunnels are raised off the bottom of the floor, that upsets everything. So this will give you a pretty clear example as to why I have a problem just doing it the way I got it. Normally, your stores are just gonna run the oil cooler and the radiator somewhat like this. Now, I can't get this all the way in the lateral orientation because, well, let's just say the tunnel floors make it so it doesn't fit. But the problem is, is now everything gets moved up an inch, inch and a half. So either I shorten my radiators or I do something completely different entirely. So as you can see, if I do the inclined or lean forward angle on the oil cooler and radiators, it's gonna fit underneath my side pod perfectly. In fact, there's gonna be room to spare. 
The other big problem with just shortening the oil cooler and the radiator is, well, I need that heat to get out of my motor. And the old radiator and the old oil cooler basically filled that entire space. And that was just enough cooling for a 1000 cc engine. Now I'm running the 1300 or 1400 Hayabusa, which is even gonna put more heat into the oil and water cooling systems. So I definitely don't wanna compensate or try to shrink the overall surface area of my radiator or oil cooler. Now this is the other part of what I'm trying to do it could seem a little excessive, but theoretically, I could have just created a giant block off plate that basically filled this entire side or this entire cavity, let's say. So the only way for air to go through my side pod would have been through the radiator or the oil cooler. Now, even though, yeah, that would work, that doesn't fix one of the main problems with the store WF1. And that main problem is, well, sadly, the body likes to swell. So as I'm driving, because, you know, bodies move around, the body shifts, the body swells, the body moves. So therefore I could, I could lose my seal. I could lose the air being forced through the oil cooler, through the radiator. Not to mention with all the complex shapes and, you know, radiuses and stuff, it's actually pretty difficult to make a perfect shield that would get all the necessary angles and make sure that like air isn't squeezing by at one of the leading edges. And just to show you how bad some of this bleeding air is, I've got what we'll call my little leaky air goblin, just to show you one of the main areas where air likes to leak out of the side pods of these store WF1s. So the leaky air goblin made it pretty clear that this whole upper edge you see doesn't actually seal up at all to the top portion of my bodywork. So if I put a wall in here, all that high pressure air is not really forced through my oil cooler or my radiator at all. It's just gonna wanna spill out over this leading edge and just travel on down the side of my car, which it sucks. So that's what made us decide that this was the only real choice create ductwork that fed directly to my oil coolers and my radiators that started at the leading edge of the bodywork or the side pod, capturing all of that righteous air. But I think it's about time we say enough about why and just get into the fact and show you a little bit more about how we ended up making such pretty sweet carbon fiber parts. So a little bit of a disclaimer, or at least continuing on the disclaimer I started earlier in the last video. When I started this, I sure as heck didn't know what I was doing, and I still don't think I know exactly what I'm doing. But thankfully, with working with my dad, we were able to figure out how to make this work, and I had to lean on him pretty heavily with everything we were doing here, the geometric shape we needed it to make the mold out of plywood. So here is the official start to the left side or the radiator ducting. We're not gonna try the little cardboard cutout because it worked well on the right side. So we basically are copying and pasting the right side from the left side. And we're just gonna hope it works. So hopefully those are my famous last words and hopefully the right side and left side can just be opposites yet symmetrical. But as you can see, we're just layering up the parts, nailing them together with a nail gun and we're just trying to make this as airtight as possible. So the main reason we're caulking this is, well, we need an airtight seal. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna work. So obviously we're using just your standard bathroom caulking, but we're also gonna make sure that we coat the outer edges with Bondo. And there's two reasons we're gonna do that. One, we're starting off with the plywood that's, you know, smooth enough that we can lay a mold on but we have to radius the corners using a router. And as soon as we do that, we're gonna throw all that nice finish away. So we're gonna recover that by using automotive Bondo. By the way, we definitely screwed up cutting one of our panels. So please don't make fun of the fact that we had to make one of them two pieces. Now here's a good example of both molds side by side. Obviously one we've done finished and the other one still has some finishing to go. As I mentioned, Bondo was the thing. So we Bondoed up both sides 
And unfortunately, well, my skills as a cinematographer let us down, so all the finishing work on the rest of that side pod didn't get covered. So obviously, we've always got to start by laying out some mold release. Then we're going to move on to cutting the carbon fiber. Now, I don't know where my dad found this mat, but it's exceptionally thick by comparison. To get rigid parts, we only needed to do two layers of carbon fiber, and that ended up getting us to about the 0.030, or I forget, I think it's 0.030 thickness of a total done part. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of overhang both on the front edge and the tail edge, so we can run the double-sided tape we're gonna use to vacuum bag the part. Now we get to start running it around the perimeter of the bag, and you can see, well, it wasn't the easiest job, unfortunately, but we got it done. We get to go ahead and start mixing in the resin and we get to start putting on the carbon fiber. Now, my dad and I tried on this specific occasion to wet the part on the mold, but I'm never doing that again. If you're ever doing this, just lay out a sheet of plastic, wet the piece of carbon fiber down on a piece and then lay it onto the part. Even though this did work out just fine for us, it's something we realized, well, we wish we hadn't have done it. Now, one of the other things that we really started to struggle with was unfortunately sealing the bag on such complex corners. Now, one of the remedies we had for that was instead of trying to get a perfect seal all the way around, we engineered in folds at certain points. Now the folds, basically how we sealed those was we just used more double-sided tape. And basically we would just have folds that we would fold over and seal it onto itself. Now, you just saw us add the peel ply and obviously what we'll call the vacuum bagging mat. Now we're gonna get this bag over it and just start cranking in some negative vacuum pressure. So that's gonna wrap up this video, highlighting the duct work that we've been creating for the store WF1 that I'm gonna be racing here this upcoming season. We've also got some little things we got out of the way. We finalized my dash, my switches, and my whole display. We also got all the airlines on order for my air shifting system. So everything's gonna be able to plumb brilliantly. Thank you for watching. We'll get you caught up with the full assembly here in the upcoming video once we're done making that final side pod and getting all the parts in house so we can start our final assembly here in the next week. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you at the next video.